What's up Team Buckhouse, Jonathan Buckhouse here and it's time for another resort review. This is the video series where we go to a resort, we ride it, we have a great day and then we break it down from lifts, prices, food, all the fun stuff that's at a resort. And we rate each one of those 10 categories from a scale of zero to 10. Zero is not applicable, they don't have it at all. One is terrible, five is average, and 10 is best in the world. After we rank all 10 categories, we come up with a score from zero to 100. And that gets the resort on a spectrum, a list of like, how sick is this resort compared to every other resort in the United States? Because we're gonna ride them all and we're gonna review every resort in the US. So that way you guys know where you should go on a vacation because vacations are very expensive. So if I can help you guys figure out either you shouldn't come to Colorado, you should go to Minnesota for a trip instead because it's gonna have more of what you need or want then that's the whole point of this series, as well as I'm just gonna tell you, yo, this is like the best in the world, you gotta come here. So the resort that we will be tearing apart today, going through, figuring out is Ski Cooper. Now this resort is near and dear to my heart. This is where I actually learned how to snowboard, took some of my first ever S-turns, was at Ski Cooper. This place is incredible. It is 12,000 vertical feet, over 470 skiable acres, and we're gonna jump into it and just break it all down. But before we jump in, Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button to join the strongest ski and snowboard community on the internet. We premiere every single video. We jump in the chat, talk to each other. We go live once a week in the winter and twice a week in the summer. It's just a great community to meet other skiers and snowboarders in the area, but also just have a place to come on the daily to get your like snowboard fix, ski fix, and just overall just mountain fix. So subscribe. Now lift prices, how affordable is it? to come to Ski Cooper. And it's actually one of the more affordable Colorado ski resorts coming in at $60 for a weekday, $80 for the weekend. Most people will be paying 80, but it's, that's still an incredible price when Vail Resorts is like $220 for a day. $80 for a lift price is really not that bad. So when it came to the prices, I gave it a six on the price. I thought that was a very fair price. of access how easy is it to get to this ski resort and with it being two hours and 30 minutes from dia it's a little bit of a trip to like fly in and drive there two hours two and a half hours really isn't that bad other than that just driving to this resort it's super mellow you do have to go over like one pass if you're coming up from denver but once you get into leadville it's not that hard to get to the ski resort so i gave it a pretty average five i didn't think it was that landlocked so they got a five on the ease of access now lodging you're not going to be able to stay there they got a goose egg zero on the lodging but you can stay in leadville there are some hotels around so you can still stay near the area but they don't have lodging there no ski and ski out zero Now lifts, this is one of Colorado's smaller ski resorts and they only have three chairlifts. One being a two seater that is the slowest chairlift ever. And then the other, I've actually never gone on the other one cause it doesn't really take you much. And then the third one's in the back, it's a three seater. It's a, it's a pretty solid chair. They also have a newly put in T-bar that accesses basically all just black terrain and a beginner carpet for all the beginners out there accesses the, accesses the bunny hill, it's super awesome. So based off of that, I mean, you're getting to everything you want to ride at Ski Cooper, but the chairlifts are super old. They could definitely be updated. They got a three when it comes to chairlifts. They, they're old. They are very old chairlifts. But why do the chairlifts matter if the runs don't? And Ski Cooper's got some pretty sick terrain. It's on the most mellow pitch of all time. So a lot of their terrain is like green and blue. They did put in like, once again, that T-bar, the axis is a lot of blacks, a lot of steeper terrain, but even that terrain, it's still pretty fresh and new. So I don't think it's as flowy as it will be eventually. And they have this really awesome like cat tour that I've actually never done. But overall their terrain there is on the beginner side. It's a more mellow area. So when it came to runs, I gave them a four. They do have blacks, they do have tree skiing but a lot of it's just mellow. You're not snowboarding very fast at Ski Cooper. It's a very just mellow mountain. And you guys know I love this category, Terrain Park. And sadly, uh, they get a one, a terrible. They don't make any snow there. So they, whenever they build a park or put anything in it, it's all from natural snow. 
So that really limits what they can do in the terrain park. So they will throw in a box or rail here, maybe a tiny little jump, and it's always terrible. So uh, a one when it comes to terrain park. Now we're gonna get hungry while we're ripping on the mountain. So how's the food? And I gave him a five on the food because it's such an average little ski lodge. You just go in there, it's like you can warm up, you can bring your own lunch, but there's the average like ski lodge food, like pretzels, hamburgers, fries, chicken tenders, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all, it's average. They do have a bar there though. Now employees, this is where people usually tell me I should rate snow conditions, but it's not fair when Ski Cooper is a place that has all natural snow and then Keystone and Brad can like blow insane amount of snow as well as depending on the time of the year, which we show up to the mountain, that snow condition can really vary. Like if you show up early to Ski Cooper, it's gonna be kind of rough. Mid season, it's gonna be great. Late season, might be a little rough. So we don't cover snow conditions, but we do cover employees because I have had an employee make a trip, but I've also had employees destroy and ruin a day of snowboarding, like the Keystone incident right here. You should check that video out. So we're gonna go over employees. With that being said, at Ski Cooper, all the times I've ever gone, I've never had an employee go crazy above and beyond, but I've also never had an employee at Ski Cooper ruin my day of riding. So they got an average score of five when it comes to employees. Expect pretty normal employees when you when you go there. Now views and scenery. It is in Colorado, you are on a mountain, but it does have like the most insane breathtaking views. They do have some sick views. The bowl, which you can do the casting in is a, is a great view. But overall the views are just kind of average for Colorado, nothing insane. So I gave them a five when it comes to views and scenery. Now, the would I go back factor, and it's hard because I would definitely go back to Ski Cooper because one, I wanna purchase it. I think that would be one of the coolest ski resorts to buy and actually turn into just like an all terrain park mountain. That's like a crazy goal of mine. We'll see if that happens. But also I grew up snowboarding there. It's like my one of my home mountains. I would truly believe Keystone's my home mountain, but that's like a close second. Mixed in there with Monarch Mountain between Ski Cooper and Monarch, those are like the main places I learned how to snowboard. So would I go back? Absolutely. I learned to snowboard there. It's a fun place. It's a mellow place. I like to take beginners there to teach them how to snowboard. So on the would I go back scale, I gave them a six because I do love just a good Ski Cooper day, at least once a season getting back out there. Now, before I tell you who this mountain is for, make sure you guys snag some Evolution merch so that way you're not caught on the mountain, not rocking the channel. We do have a ski version for all the skiers out there. So it's all just the normal Evolution stickers, as well as the hats, t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves. We got all the merch down below. Make sure people know you're a part of Team Hook House when you're ripping around Colorado or any other state with the Evolution logo on the hat. Trust me, people tell me all the time, like, yo, I ran into someone with a sticker. We took some runs. It was so sick. So snag some merch, let people know you're part of Team Hook House, but also, if you do snag it, tag me on my Instagram and I'll give you guys gear and sticker shout outs, but also just follow the Instagram for bonus extra content and up to date information. We do travel to a ton of ski resorts and the best way to stay up to date with that is by following my Instagram. Now, who do I think this resort is for? It's definitely for the families and the beginners. If you're a beginner snowboarder, come here, learn how to snowboard. You'll be able to learn how to do S turns, all kinds of stuff. Like learning how to turn your snowboard, this resort is perfect for you. But also if you have a family of young kids and you want them to just be able to run around or just pull up and you go do your own thing and let your six year old just go do whatever they want. That's what my buddy's parents did when they took us, we would just ride around and do whatever we wanted. So it's a really incredible place. It's such a home mom and pop ski resort style. I, I love Ski Cooper so much, but it's for the beginner. If you're a super gnarly shredder, um, maybe the cat tour is super sick, I don't know, but it's just a really fun, relaxing place to rip. Now let's add those scores together and see where they come on the spectrum and Ski Cooper got a 40, which is below average, 10 points. This is my home mountain and I did not let up. We stayed true to the rankings, no bias here. They got a 40 on the scale. It is a sick resort, but it comes in a little below average on our scale thing. But once again, if you're a beginner, if you're like in Texas and you kind of, you're getting into snowboarding and you want to make a Colorado trip, this is a sick resort to check out. Instead of going spending all that money at Keystone and Breck and you're not, you're just gonna stay on the blues and the greens and the bunny hills, don't spend all that money. Come to Ski Cooper and you're gonna have a great time. I can promise you that. But this is a conversation if you are a Colorado local and you rip Ski Cooper, drop some tips down below. Where's the best place to eat in Leadville? Where should you stay? All that type of information, guys. Let's help other people plan a trip to Ski Cooper or just in general, this 
channel is about the community. So let's have it in the comments, guys. You're incredible. But also, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. That lets other people see this video more. The more likes the video gets, the more YouTube will share it, more new people can see this video and know they should come to Ski Cooper instead of wasting all that money at Breck or Keystone. And of course, we're gonna ride every resort in the US. So make sure you check out the resort map. It's a map of the United States with every ski resort in the US. It's just cool to look at. There's so many resorts. But if you click on the green ones, you'll see the videos in which we've gone riding at those resorts. And then if the red ones, we haven't been there yet. So you would know if I've still got to come to your ski resort and then you can come work with me. So check out the resort map. It's super sick. It also has all the re resort reviews there. So you can see which one is the highest ranked resort review and which one has the lowest score. Now, if you want to see a vlog from this day, I haven't been there in a, like I think two years. So check out that video right here. But also if you liking these resort review videos, check out the resort review playlist. I'm going to have that playlist right here as well as linked in the description. And with that team up house, as always, thank you so much for shredding with us today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving and we'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion. Yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no, no. I ain't never gonna need nobody. Got a hole? Got a hole. <laughs> I got a